Today, I'm going to be combining two of my favorite hobbies, photography and shrimp keeping. I love taking pictures of my Neocaridina shrimps, but I didn't always get very good results, especially when I was first starting out. Being so small and aquatic, these little fancy shrimps can be a little difficult to catch and show off just how brilliant they can be. First. Let's start off by getting rid of any algae or buildups on your glass with a quick clean. Much better! The algae can make your pics look blurry even if you focus perfectly. In your tank, you will probably also want to have a few spots picked out that you think look nice in photos. You can try taking test shots to frame things, as well as testing exposure settings. More on that later. Here are a couple examples. I tend to try to pick some spots that the shrimps frequent anyway, because I know that they'll come back. You'll want to have some wood like cholo wood or driftwood, decorations, plants, leaves, really just something for the shrimp to perch on. You can take photos of the shrimps on the ground, but being up on something can make for a more interesting photo. Top tip, keeping your perches at 90 degree angles to the glass will help guide your shrimps into a position where you can get their whole body in focus. Shrimps at oblique angles do not play nicely with the shallow depth of field resulting from macro. Turn to the side, the same shrimp is now fully in focus. Try to pick something that's contrasting in color to your shrimps. That way they'll have more of a pop instead of being camouflaged. A very important thing to keep in mind is your background. Try to avoid areas that might have plants that make it look too busy or crowded, or things like pumps, filters, heaters, or anything else that could be distracting. Darker backgrounds can show more noise as well. Another option would be to have a separate small studio tank set up, and move the shrimp there temporarily. This way there will be no other distractions in the photo and lighting can be set up and controlled a little easier. This will put more stress on your shrimps though, so you should limit this and be cautious. Talking about lighting, today I'm going to keep it very simple. I don't have an external flash at the moment, so we will only be using the built-in flash on my camera, along with a DIY Pringles diffuser. While this won't give you the absolute best results, it's more than usable and costs next to nothing to make. Reflections are something else to watch for. A dark sheet or screen behind you can help reduce the glare on the glass from other lights in the room. If you are having issues with the flash on your camera causing ghosting or bright spots, you can try turning your flash down if possible, or even just moving your lens closer to the glass. Most of the time, I shoot with the front of the lens almost touching the glass. Shooting at an angle can also cause other issues. Keep the camera perpendicular to the glass as much as possible. This will reduce distortions, which can be seen as blurriness or even stretching. Okay, now that we have all that out of the way, let's talk about the camera. I will be taking a look at two different options today. I would recommend some kind of DSLR or mirrorless camera, something where you can change the lens so you can get a little closer. If you don't have one of those, however, stay tuned as I will also go over a way to get good results with a smartphone. The camera I'm using today is a Sony A5000, a relatively inexpensive camera that's a few years old. You really don't need anything fancy or expensive. We will even be using the kit lens that came with the camera. The only other thing that I would highly recommend getting is something like extension tubes which are really quite cheap and worth the money. Some of them will even let you autofocus still. Other tools that can help would be a tripod, but that's not a necessity. If you took some test shots of the spots you picked, you should already have a good idea of your settings for exposure. But I'm still going to go over that a bit here. Generally, you'll want a shutter speed of 1 80th or faster Sometimes, if you get a really friendly shrimp that's sitting still, you can use lower shutter speeds, but this will increase the risk of motion blur. When shooting macro, 
you will want a smaller aperture as well. Shooting at such close distances can shrink your depth of field down to fractions of a millimeter, but stopping down will give you a little more room to play. I generally try to find a happy medium of depth of field and light, shooting around f8 most of the time. When it comes to ISO, you can set this to auto. My camera gives clean images up to about ISO 1250, but try to shoot this as low as you can for more detail. This is the setting I will change the most to correct for exposure. Try to expose to the right as much as possible without clipping highlights. But watch, my camera's histogram doesn't work well with using the flash in water. If you don't have one of them clunky things, fret not, your glass slab can do it too. Shouldn't matter what kind of phone you have as long as it has a camera. Phone cameras have much smaller sensors. This will increase the amount of noise and decrease the level of detail in your photos. Cropping in will just exacerbate that as well. Many modern phones will even have a dedicated macro camera. However, a lot of the times, these are made cheaper with even smaller and lower quality sensors. So play around with what your phone has. You might find you get better results shooting from your main camera. Little clip-on lenses can also be found for very cheap. While these generally don't have much quality to them, they will let you get very close. Using a third-party camera app can sometimes help as well, allowing you more control of the exposure settings on your phone. Auto mode on your phone can get the job done, but usually chooses slower shutter speeds. Sometimes like on this phone, your settings will be limited. This is when I shoot on auto and cross my fingers. These principles can even be transferred to getting photos of smaller fish as well. Just be mindful that too much flash or doing this too often can cause stress to your critters and possibly hurt their eyes. Now that we have our photos, there is one last thing to do before throwing them up on social media. Post-processing. I'm going to edit these photos on my phone. There are many apps to do so, but I will be using the free version of Photoshop Express. There isn't much I do to process my images. I will add a tiny bit of clarity and sharpness to show a little more detail in the shrimp, as well as a little contrast. The main thing here is the exposure. Brighter photos generally draw more attention and look better, but watch out for those highlights. I will also adjust the color temperature here if needed, though my camera's auto white balance generally does a good job. Lastly, you can remove any blotches and spots with the heel tool. And that's it, Shrimple. Share your photo and show off your shrimpies. Hopefully you found this video enjoyable and helpful. I am by no means an expert and always learning something new. If you learned something new too, leave a like and subscribe for more animal and photography videos. Thanks for watching.